Um, and then if you have direct questions, please just put them in the chat because I think it'll be a little bit easier um, to just manage them that way. Um, so I didn't even introduce myself. I'm sorry. I'm Carrie Wardlaw. I work in the admissions office. Um, I've been here a long time with a break in the middle, but I have a student here. My son is a freshman um, skier, so I feel like I know the ins and outs. I was a ski coach here for a while. Um, so I do know a little bit about the program. Um, we also have Terry Della Quadri, who's our program director with us. Katie Gilligan, who's the director of ski operations here. And she's also the women's fish, fish coach. Um, Nora Dempsey, who's a senior here and one of Katie's athletes. And Aiden Smith, who's an alum who graduated two years ago and is now at RPI. So they're gonna help me with our presentation um, and just hopefully help you guys understand us a little bit more. Um, so just a general overview about Northwood that you, um, just some statistics you may not know. Um, we're a student body of about 190 kids right now. Um, boarding in day, we're about 145 boarders, um, 45 day students. We have kids, um, 145 domestic kids, um, 43, I'm just looking at my notes so I don't get the number wrong, 43 international kids. Um, we have 23 states represented and 27 countries right now. Um, so we have um, a big diverse group of kids that are here right now, which we're super excited about. Um, during COVID, we've actually been able to be in person. We brought our kids in in the fall. Um, in August, we had did a two week quarantine for them um, on campus, delivering food to their rooms, um, put the, putting them in cohorts um, to ensure that we could hopefully do our best job to keep them here in person. And we did that successfully all the way through November. Um, we had no positive cases on our campus, staff or students. Um, we sent the kids home in November um, for a six week um, break basically to get them home. Um, the skiers, and I'll let Katie and Terry just speak to that a little bit more later, um, that we um, brought them back a little bit so they could get some training in. But we have brought the students back yesterday, as a matter of fact, and today they're streaming in. Um, so that we can start our second trimester in person as well. Um, another, they had to come with a negative test. They're in quarantine right now for a few days. Um, and then we're gonna hopefully start in person on Monday. And we did start virtually two weeks ago. So the kids have technically been in class for two weeks, but that's been virtual. Um, so I'm gonna stop there just with the general stuff and I'm gonna show a ski video to you. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna let Katie and Terry take over. And again, you can put your questions in the chat and um, we'll hope to answer them. I decided to come here because um, it gave me opportunities that I didn't have back home, uh, like going to school and skiing at the same time and um, just pursuing my education while uh, being able to train every day and have the same amount of time on snow than everyone else, but also not missing a lot of school. Northwood offers a platform for excellence in both athletics and academics. They, um, we've recently switched our schedule so that we are getting the high quality morning training at, the, at Whiteface and then in the afternoons they have all their classes. We also have switched it so that the second trimester when we're in season they're able to take a lighter course load and that's been helping our skiers with maintaining uh, Dean's List or High Honors in all three of their trimesters. Yeah, the winter schedule is the same as the spring and fall in the sense that you have all five classes. So you're still gonna have a full, days of, full day of school, but you won't have the extra periods and the extra time off. You'll just still get the same amount of work, but you'll be able to ski for, what, four hours a day. 
White Face is, is really the ideal training venue because, you know, unlike most other places that the teams train, we can train Super G, um, full length GS. It's uh, a training venue that's fully protected with safety netting all, all season long. We can close the trail at any time um, for our training. And it's very safe and very, very hard snow, which is which is what we're looking for. Yeah, you know, Whiteface, I think, is one of the best training venues in the East Coast, or if not in the country, just because of the, the trail we have and the conditions are always pretty good. Conditions that we have surface-wise are world-class. We have, we had NORAMs here two years ago and all the national team coaches were saying how they hadn't seen a surface this legit since they were in Solden at the beginning of the World Cup circuit. So, you know, that says something for what these kids are training on. It also really helps develop um, really accurate tuning techniques because if you go out there with um, equipment that's unprepared, you're not going to have a good day. So these kids are really learning the ins and outs of the technical side of their equipment. Understanding your equipment is half of the battle when it comes to, you know, athlete management and equipment management. Perfect conditions for me growing up at, like, growing up at Whiteface, training on hard ice, difficult conditions all the time, and then you go somewhere hard and everyone, even at that high level, like freaked out and Terry was like oh, like you got this like this is what you train on every single day and I went out there I scored my first Noram point I came top 30 came like 20 29th or 30th or something NICEF is uh, the, the New York Ski Education Foundation they manage the training venue at, at Whiteface a lot of our skiers start at NICEF from a young age and then they move move into Northwood School. Our teams train with Northwood coaches and NICEF coaches, we work together. Quite often we train with the NICEF athletes also. So it's a partnership. If you have the ability to utilize NICEF and Northwood coaches. One of our most successful skiers, uh, Thomas Vaughn, he's, he's come back and he started coaching last year with our ski team. And uh, you know he was an Olympic athlete that came through the Northwood program. I liked the idea of accessibility to everything. It had things like music, mountain biking, whitewater kayaking, yoga, rock climbing, art, to drama. The fall and the springtime can be really fun um, and whether it be going down to the Northwood Beach or um, I don't know just going out for a night for dinner. It's a quick walk. I think it's really nice how central everything is in Lake Placid. Ooh, going out for lunch is probably the biggest one on weekends or breakfast. Mm. This is, Lake Placid has a plethora of breakfast spots, I'm not gonna lie, that's probably my favorite. I think what makes Northwood so unique is that it is set in this town of Lake Placid and to have a real town just minutes from our campus is unbelievable. The best thing that anybody who's interested in Northwood School can really do is come visit us, come see our campus, meet our students, come check out Whiteface. So Katie and Terry, you guys can take it away. Hi, my name's Terry Del Guardia, as, as uh, Carrie mentioned, I'm the Ski Program Director at Northwood School here. And I don't know if that's my phone that's dinging, I don't think it is. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, at the end of that video, I, I said the best thing you can do is come visit us, which I'm, I'm really sad to say is not possible these days because it would, it's so much nicer to sit across the table from everyone and talk to them about things. Um, this virtual, this virtual event, it doesn't come cl close to meeting people personally, but we'll, we're, we're trying. Um, a lot of you are very familiar with the, the setup we have, the partnership with NICEF. So I won't go into that much, but I, I will talk about it a little bit because some of you um, aren't, aren't coming from NICEF. So NICEF is the, uh, 
New York Ski Education Foundation. They're the local club. All of our Northwood skiers join that, the NICEF club and our training is, is through NICEF. So we, we, we're the Northwood ski team, but we, we, when we're out there, we're also the NICEF ski team. Um, we, we train at Whiteface, like we talked about, which is, you know, an Olympic hill. It's, it's top notch. The national team in a regular year when there's no COVID, they, they come here almost every year for some training, some high level races, either the U.S. Nationals, the NORAM circuit, which is just below the World Cup, um, junior nationals, junior Eastern junior championships at the U16 level, at the, at the FIS U19 level. Um, they have collegiate, St. Lawrence hosts their carnival at Whiteface. Um, in, in two years, the World University Championships are gonna be held at Whiteface. It's, um, it's a world-class venue. It's great for training because it's got a lot of terrain you're always, you got steeps, you got rollers to ski over, you've got flats. Uh, we, we train on several different trails and we're able to train often super G, um, full length GS up, you know, a minute, 10 second GS sometimes and all different kinds of solemn venues. So it's, and, and like I said in the video, it's often very, very hard snow, which is, is, perfect for for training right now it just it just snowed over a foot so we don't have that those conditions but um, I'm sure before the end of the season we'll get them but Lake Placid is is a great place to go to school the kids talked about walking downtown going to restaurants can't wait until next year when hopefully we they can do that again um, luckily uh, this year even during the COVID our our skiers are We've been going 20 days now after Christmas, training almost every day out at Whiteface. And um, Whiteface is a 10 minute drive from campus. And the hockey teams are able to train, the soccer teams are able to train, but we're the only ones that have had competitions. We just started having our first ski races last week and um, hopefully that will continue. The one, one main difference that over our program than the NICEF winter term is we start right off in the fall with a, with a full, full time, six day a week dry land conditioning program. And the kids can also get out and do some mountain climbing, some kayaking and uh, mountain biking, utilizing the, the Adirondacks around us. Sorry, I just thought I, somebody texted me. Um, is is Katie is Katie still up there? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't. Just let me know when you want to break in, Katie. I yeah. Don't know yeah. If I'm rambling. <laughs> no, I'm happy to jump in. Uh, my name is Katie Gilligan. I am the director of ski operations, and I'm the women's fist coach, as Carrie mentioned before. Um, I was also an alum, so I, you know came back to Northwood. Uh, whoa, sorry. <laughs> the screen behind me fell. Um, I came back to Northwood to, you know, really further grow the ski program into what I knew it could be. Um, I've been here for about seven years. And within that seven years, this program has really transformed just in that the administration has dedicated so much time and so many resources into making sure that the skiers are getting what they need, which is, you know, maybe a little bit different than my time here where we used to train in the afternoons where now the skiers train in the morning. Um, we're able to get really premier training times. We get awesome flexibility from our academics and our teachers. And that's what is the beauty of the Northwood program is I like to call it the best of both worlds. You're going to get the high level academics, but you're also going to get the flexibility to train and be an elite athlete at any level that you want. Um, the other really cool part is that we're not just a ski academy in that you're surrounded by other high level athletes in different areas you're surrounded by hockey players and soccer players that all have the same you know focus and mental state in the gym and just toward their athletic goals but you also kind of have an out in terms of your socializing and 
you know, becoming friends with people from all over the world that are also, you know, again, have your same frame of mind, but a little different outlet. So that is kind of the couple of things that make us really unique um, in our program. And then to touch on the, you know, COVID, what Carrie was saying with how we survived COVID in the fall and how we continue to do so, there's a lot of silver linings in that when it comes to the ski team. And that is all the new technology that we have um, for our teachers to use for our skiers that are, you know, maybe not this year or traveling all over, but we will be again. And when we are, we're able to have, you know, you touch a button and your whole class pops up and you're able to not miss those English lectures or, you know, classes like that, where it really takes a hit when you're not in class and you're getting notes from friends and things like that. We're able to utilize all this technology that we have and it's going to help us down the road big time. So we're really excited about that. We're not excited about where we are now, but, you know, we'll get back to normal life. We'll get back to racing and we're really looking forward to having, you know, some of these technological advances that um, our whole community has put in place. So that's kind of what I had. Um, Terry, if you want to talk about our kind of full round, uh, year round camps, I think that would be good to mention. Okay, yeah. So um, Terry mentioned that we just took a 65 day break um, this year. The ski team, we only had about seven days off. Um, normally, in a normal year, we, we start out with the dry land when school starts, end of, October, or end of August, beginning of September. And we usually do a camp in Europe two, two weeks. This year we were gonna do three weeks until we couldn't go to Europe. Um, but that's at the end of October, beginning of November. Then we'll come, we come back. If there's not skiing here mid-November, we maybe go to Sunday River, Maine for um, eight to 14 days. By the time we get back from that, it's Christmas or or early December, and we'll be skiing at home. Um, the, the skiing started later this year, so we, we did the camp later in, in Maine. Uh, normally, training starts pretty regularly at Whiteface by Thanksgiving. So our, our team usually is able to train here, um, you know, early December. In the past, every year is a little bit different. In the past, we've done some skiing right after Thanksgiving in Colorado. I don't know if we'll continue to do that, but um, that's something that happened in the past. Then potentially we're talking about with the new ability to do virtual classes, skiing already in May and early June. Um, going, going forward, we, we're probably gonna be starting to do that kind of thing more. Then we'll, the last two years haven't really worked out, but we, we always plan on a three week camp in Chile, three or four week camp in Chile, ending right before school starts at the beginning of, or at the end of August. So that a, kind of an August block of training in Chile. Um, this year was unable to happen because of COVID. Last year there was no snow in Chile. So next year we'll do that. We'll get there. You want to hear, should we hear from maybe Nora Dempsey or could Are you guys all set? Yeah, but, yeah, there's a couple questions um, in the chat. So um, I can, I'm just going to make um, mute Nora and Aiden, make sure I can unmute them. You guys good? Yep. Great. Um, so one of the questions probably for you, Nora, um, can you just let us know where you were before you came to Northwood, um, your ski program, your school, and sort of what drove you to look at um, boarding schools in general or just Northwood or how you got here? All right, well, I'm Nora Dempsey. I'm a senior here and I'm from Saratoga Springs, New York. And I went to public school there for my first two years of high school. and skied with the NYSEF winter term program. And my junior year, I transferred to Northwood because I was looking for a place where I could balance my academics as I got into the more advanced classes in the, um, as high school progressed. So moving to Northwood really helped me balance my academics with my skiing in a way that 
a public school probably wouldn't have supported as well. Great, thanks. Um, and how's the year going so far this year? This year has gone very well. We had a great training block in Sunday River, Maine that I think really jump-started my season considering that it had to start late because of COVID and conditions. Um, and now training at Whiteface over the holidays has been really good. The training today was a little soft because we just got snow, but um, I'm really excited for the conditions to go back to the legendary Whiteface ice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is there. Um, awesome, thanks, Nora. Aiden, um, I have a question for you too. Um, can you just describe what it was like as a skier, um, sort of going through the college process here, how the college guidance office helped you and how the coaches um, helped you get where you are today? Yeah, um, so going through like the whole college process, I think for everyone is kind of difficult, but the advisors at Northwood were pretty awesome. Uh, my advisor was John Spear and he helped me kind of uh, navigate the whole thing and figure out exactly what I wanted from college and uh, kind of where I wanted to go. And skiing, I wanted skiing to be a part of my uh, college career, but it wasn't um, my main focus. Um, so I kind of just looked for a college that um, that I, I would like to be at that had like a ski program on the side. So I go to RPI um, in Troy, which is Rensselaer Polytech Institute. And um, they only have a club skiing team, but it's still USCSA and it's a lot of fun um, being a part of that. And I mean, everybody at, uh, I, part of what I loved about Northwood was that the teachers and the faculty were like your friends and they wanted to see you succeed. So, you know, um, Katie and Terry helped me kind of uh, figure out also what I wanted to do and all my coaches helped me figure that out and same with the teachers and um, the the advisors as well so I mean that, that was kind of one of my favorite things about Northwood was just the friendliness of the, the faculty. Awesome thanks do you have any siblings that went here Aid? Uh, yes I do I have <laughs> two siblings both of which um, went to Northwood and graduated I have a twin sister and an older brother who actually finished uh, or graduated from college last year and, and now has a, has a job and they both ski raced through um, NYSA for Northwood. Great, thank you. Um, Nora, I'm gonna put you on the spot again just because this is always a question that we get. Um, what's one of your favorite sort of traditions or events or things that go on at Northwood? It doesn't have to be ski related, it certainly can be, but if there's anything else that you really love share well this isn't a tradition yet because it's only happened for one year but this year during the fall the entire school spent a lot of time outside just on the fields in front of the school playing football and soccer and spike ball and i'd say like seeing um how we couldn't spend time inside with each other and had to be separated into cohorts for the most part i think it was really amazing to see the whole school come together and still have fun when like make the best of what we could and playing games outside was just the best part of my fall for sure. That's great. I, I do agree. It's funny. I, I think it's going to become a tradition because, you know, it was one of those things that came out of COVID that it was a silver lining that everyone just says they had such a blast all fall being able to be together where, where normally not people start to travel or at least some of the other teams. And so I thought that was pretty neat too. Um, again, anyone that's on the call, feel free to throw a, a question in the chat um, so um, we can ask these guys. They're, they're here for you, Katie or Terry or, you know, specific um, age groups where, where we, we can certainly answer that too. Um, someone just said, what has been the most valuable part of Northwood besides skiing? So Nora or Aiden, feel free. I think both of you could, could hop into that one. Yeah, um, I think I have a deep something for that. One, uh, one of my also like opportunity, I think, uh, at least when I was there, uh, Northwood had so many different kind of opportunities. Uh, before I uh, came to Northwood, I, I was just like a I ski raced and I did soccer sometimes for fun. Um, but because uh, there's not like a PE class or anything like that, you have to have a sport in the fall uh 
the fall, winter, and spring. And I had to figure out kind of what I wanted to do for the spring sport of my freshman year. And uh, I never mountain biked before, but I saw that that was an opportunity that I had. And I did that for the spring semester. I've done it every year since, both in the fall and the spring. And it's become one of the, one of my favorite things to do in the Adirondacks. And I even got me into road biking too. So I think like opportunity, you know. Yeah, I'd say, and Katie can even probably speak to this because she's an alum as well. But I hear when so many, when alum come back, you know, one of the things that they do talk about is how they all sort of get out of their comfort zone a little bit and try all these new things that maybe they thought that they never would ever have tried in the past just because you sort of set yourself on a path and don't have any idea what may come your way. And, and um, we do have such a great place where we live and work and play and, you know, to an experience all of that obviously helps your sport for one to try all those different things. Um, so thank you. I don't know, Katie, if you did want to add to that at all. <laughs> no, it's, you know, what you said, Lake Placid is such a unique spot because of all the things we get to do and, you know, pond hockey and those kind of things are way out of my comfort zone. And I did them when I was a kid and now I came back and I married the hockey coach. So, I mean, it, it all comes full circle. <laughs> I feel like he really married up though, because he married. Him, so. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, Aiden, and just one more for you. Um, I know you touched on a little bit, but do you think your experience here really, you know, are you as well prepared for college as you, you thought you would be coming out of here? I mean, yeah, uh, I certainly, where I go for college is pretty high for academics and it's certainly challenging, but I think some, a lot of my classes at Northwood are also really challenging and they kind of help uh, give me some study methods and, and that kind of stuff for to be more prepared than I think if I just went to my public high school for, for the types of classes that I'm taking. Like um, AP literature and AP lang uh, language was, uh, were, were some of the more difficult classes that I took and help, and I think by taking those classes, I'm more prepared for uh, my academics now. Great, thank you. Um, one other question just popped up. Nora, can you just, um, explain sort of a, a typical day in the life of a ski racer someone want to ask maybe not a covid day but in a <laughs> normal <laughs> year what, i was going to ask like, which yeah no this um, we hope this is a one off and we don't have to ever talk about the covid anymore but um, on a typical normal day all right well in the winter on a typical day we wake up um go pick up breakfast at around 7.30, leave for the mountain at eight, and we train till 11.30 and get back in time for lunch and have a quick lunch, maybe get in dress code. <laughs> we get in dress code. Get, and, um, and, um, no, and we go to our classes in the afternoon and then we have dinner at about six and study hall from 7.45 to 9.45. And usually we find time to tune either on our off periods or before study hall. And then we are exhausted from skiing in school all day. So we go to bed and wake up and do it again. <laughs> That's great, yeah. And just uh, to touch on that too, and in case you didn't know, our winter schedule is such that we um, on Mondays have an all academic day. So we let the kids sleep in. Um, we don't start classes till a little bit later. They have all day of classes with some breaks in between, but there's usually no sports on Monday. I mean, again, this year's a little different just because the schedules aren't any kind of normalcy, but um, then they could meet with their teachers, get some extra help because they probably raced all weekend. Um, and then we do have that dinner and two hour study hall. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as Katie mentioned, we go to school in the morning. I'm sorry, go to the mountain in the morning, do all of our co-curriculars, have school in the afternoon from 1230 to six um, dinner, study hall. And then Fridays, because we don't like to do anything to make it easy, we go back to a morning schedule um, in the winter. But we have shortened classes. So everything is done by noonish. 
Um, and then that way, if the kids do have to leave for a race, um, hopefully they've met all their classes and they wouldn't miss them on a Friday. Obviously, we know ski racing is a little different where it's not just on the weekend. So sometimes you'll miss the entire week if you're going to a fist race. But um, that's our winter schedule, which really was put into place for the skiers because um, Katie said, you know, obviously training in the morning is much more pleasant than in the dark, cold afternoon here. So they, they really get the best snow. Um, and then we just really focus on academics in the afternoon. Um, so thanks, Nora, for that. Um, that's all the questions that I have in the chat right now, um, unless anyone else wants to throw one in or um, Katie and Terry, if we've missed anything. Um, if not, I can speak a little bit to the admissions process, but if you guys want to chat a little more ski stuff before we go, please feel free. Just following up on what you just said, Carrie, um, I think we're a small enough ski team here. We have, we're 25 kids. Uh, and we, we have sometimes, a, a, we always have a range of abilities. Some, sometimes we have athletes who are racing at the highest level in the US, they race in NORAMs, which, which means they're missing a lot of school. And then we have, have kids that are more intent on, on um, they, they actually miss some training for, for school. So we have, both, we have both ends. And being such a small, small, program we're, we're able to support um everyone you know we we can we can offer support to that really high level person who's who's maybe going to school one day in two weeks and we can also support the person that that um never misses a class so um yeah kind of a cool story about um, just individualizing some students' schedules like that is, um, you saw in the video before Sarah Bennett, um, who's now skiing on the Canadian um, junior development team, she missed pretty much her entire senior winter. She was on the road so much doing the full NORAM circuit. And she was had a real interest for videography. And, you know, she was always the kid with the GoPro on the hill. And she created some really cool edits. And um, our head of our like creative director here at Northwood took her made like an independent study for her and worked with her individually because she was on the road all the time and he was able to work with her you know somewhat virtually and taught her a ton of these videography skills and she was able to get a credit for that and you know develop a passion of hers while she was on the road so you know that's just one example of how we're able to kind of manipulate schedules and work with everyone and you know like Aiden said really offer some opportunities that are super unique yeah Thanks, Katie. Um, so I'll just step into sort of the admissions process, which we hope you all do um, after hearing this. And please feel free to reach out to any one of us with more questions. Um, the next step is basically to start an application, which we would love to see from everybody. Um, that happens on our website. It's if you go to northwoodschool.org. Um, under the admissions tab, there's a couple different um, uh, places you can go. You can either use Gateway or um, SAO to do that. Um, it's very simple. All the steps are listed on our website um, on how to do that. And basically, once you start the gateway application, um, it gives you exactly what we need from you. Um, but again, you can always reach out to anyone in the admissions office or Katie or Terry um, to ask any questions about that. So um, that's all we have. I really appreciate people coming on and listening to us and hearing about Northwood. And again, please reach out to anyone um, if you have any more questions or um, need any more information. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.